Hey guys, Vikas over here and this is your genius guys. Today I am making with a new video around ESP8266 where you will see how to get started with this. So basically ESP8266 is a Wi-Fi module that comes with full TCP IP stack as well as 132 bit RISC microcontroller. This also features 16 KB of RAM for instructions and 96 KB of RAM for data as well as up to 4 MB flash. And it comes with full support of 802.11 BGN which can be used as uh, like as an access point or it can be used as a Wi-Fi client. So it again comes with multiple GPIOs, I2C, SPI, I2S and uh, ADC support. Uh, it again comes with many flavors like from ESP01 to ESP12 and the latest one in the lineup is the ESP32 modules that comes with Bluetooth low energy and as well as Wi-Fi support. The stock module comes with 80 command support which can be used by other microcontrollers to add networking features onto some microcontrollers like Arduino or anything. But uh, again the user can take advantage of the microcontroller that is inside the module only and it supports firmware like MicroPython, Arduino and like node issue and so on onto the in the module only. So you can put performance if you want to use the Wi-Fi module as standalone or it can be used with AT commands from any microcontroller. Uh, so today we'll see how to use with AT commands and in later on videos I will be covering how to use with uh, different formats like node MCU, Arduino and MicroPython. Guys before starting one uh, uh, most important thing is while you are using sp 26 module be careful about the power requirement and all because this module is again of 3.3 volt and so you have to be careful don't use 5 volt or other volts or supply it has to be strictly 3.3 volt only so while using with any com port of your pc or something which i will be showing use a usb uart module that supports 3.3 volt like from ftdi so it will not damage your esp to system because i have already fixed that i have damaged my couple of modules with that and again if you are using this module then use a separate power supply that is having 3.3 volt because this is kind of power hungry and your computer USB port is not able to provide the power required by this. So being said that guys let's get started. So guys uh, these are some of ESP8266 modules. Uh, so this one is the ESP826601 module that I was uh, working on earlier and these are a couple of different modules that I have recently received so I'll just open it up so these are uh, like three different kinds of modules and one is uh, like ESP826601 which I am having and uh, this module over here that is ESP26 uh, like 12E that is having onboard antenna but this one more this one is having uh, like it doesn't have onboard antenna so you are going to need uh, to put on one external antenna if you want so I'll uh, go with the ESP8266 12B module okay and for communication with computer so we are going to first try with 80 commands so we are going to need uh, one USB to UART module and that should have to be to 3.3 volt compatible so this one I am having from FTDI and it has one jumper so that it makes me choose between 3.3 volt or 5 volt so i'm going to use this one and this esp 26 module with one 3.3 separate power supply as i said earlier so it, the connections uh, seems to be look like this let's say it's your supply having 3.3 volt and ground so make it ground so over here on the UART module I am going to make the ground common with the supply and I will take the RX and TX so this one is RX this one is TX and on the ESP8266 module the connection goes like this the VCC connects to the 3.3 volt of your power supply module the ground connected connects to common ground with USB art module and as well as power supply. The GPO15 has to be connected to ground only. 
the t x spin goes to r x spin the r x spin of your s p 2 6 goes to t x spin of the s p watt model and once again the reset pin goes to pcc so if you are interested in uh, like making reset on all you just need to put on a switch to ground okay and this has to be connected through a register okay so what happens whenever you press a switch the uh, pin gets ground so it gets reset but as other time it connected to uh, like a VCC through a register so it don't reset and whenever you press the ground the voltage drop across the register and the s p board gets reset and one more the enable pin has to be connected to VCC so to make it enable so over here also you can put a switch to VCC so that when you press the uh, or permanent switch then when you close the switch the board gets enabled and you can make out a connection of GPL0 which can be used for programming so this is right, right now not required but uh, when you are going to like upgrade firmware like node MCU or MicroPython we are going to use that so that's all with these connections so now we are going to make uh, some wire connections so we will solder some cables onto it because we are not going to use headers as it is not breadboard friendly the pitch over here between the different pins is not breadboard compatible so let's get connect some wires and we'll connect uh, the USB art module and everything and we'll connect it to a PC through a USB cable so let's get back to the soldering station and we'll do the wiring and we'll see how it responds to 80 commands so guys this is set up the way I have connected my USB to C6 that is over here this one uh, to my USB to UART module and uh, this all things are powered up by the SMPS modification that I have done using the 3.3 volt output of the SMPS so this all again is connected to this USB cable this one over here to my PC so let's get back to the PC and we'll uh, check out if everything works so guys after everything has been connected now over here in our PC Head over to my computer, manage. Uh, so this will uh, nothing but just show you the home port that your USB to UART converter is currently using. If you know it already, then you can skip this step. So over here under device manager. You can see something like your USB serial port or something or USB to UART port anything uh, provided the drivers are correctly installed so if you have not installed drivers for your converter you can you will see something like unknown device or something so you just need to install drivers for that so after getting the COM port number that is COM16 for me like op open up any serial terminal application right now I am going to use the Arduino serial terminal but you can use any other application that supports serial communication. So go to like select over here port under com 16 and open up the serial monitor. And over here choose the baud rate the 115200 that is the default baud rate that comes with stock ESP interface module and on over here choose both NL and CR. Other option doesn't work I have just verified it. So make sure your ESP interface connected and over here you can check it by using the command 80 so it should respond with 80 ok so if you get 80 ok that means your yes page is perfectly working and now uh, just here uh, let's say you want in the middle you want to set your yes uh, page model and do that you can use the command Now over here, we are, what we are going to do is we will configure the SP266 as a 
this is the client and or as a client and or that is called a station and uh, we'll try to just uh, ping or browse from web pages in my local network. so these are the steps that is to be done so as you know uh, the ESP this can be configured as either like station or web page station or can be used as web page access point or it can be used as so for this we are going to need configure it as a web page station Use the command cw mode and that equals that take up one parameter that is one for using it as a station. Okay, now this is configured as a web page station. So if you want to check in which mode your ESP2 system is right now, you can use the command at plus c plus two mode with question mark. It returns you the current mode that is your ASP to is in now. Now uh, we just want to connect to the Wi-Fi network in my or in your room or something wherever you want. So to list out the access point available, we use the command twlst. So this returns you the different access points available okay, with other parameters and so on. So to connect to any access point, just need to use command at plus is equal to jp. Then takes two parameters. First is your username and sorry, and the sorry first one is the access. Uh, sorry, first one is the SID, then the password. And that is nothing but whatever which is missing. Okay, after everything goes fine, you can see something like what they connected, what they got. Now, if you are interested, like connecting to the Wi-Fi network automatically, whenever your ESP is ESP two six model boots up, you can use something like AT plus auto on. So uh, you can just check. Okay, so it doesn't tag the equals question mark. Which uh, other team will come or GPS model text actually. So, so if an option is available, okay, fine. So, 80 plus auto clock equal either 0 or 1. If you make 1, then it, the ESP2 system will automatically connect it or get connected to the Wi Fi network that you have provided earlier. It's already in that mode, that's why it's showing error. Now, as the like kind of module is already connected, you can type check in for the IP that is AT plus CI. Uh, so over here, you see it has provided us the IP as well as the MAC address. So okay. now to start communicating with the server using TCP IP, we just need to configure the TCP connection. So to do that, AT plus JP start and it takes two for three parameters that is first is the mode you want like, uh, for me it is TCP right now but you can, you can check out QDP and all the IP of the server and lastly the port the default is 80 whatever I am using it be changed depending upon the server you are pinging or connecting into now, if you are interested to check the connection status right now, you can use the command CIP status. That is AT plus CIP. 
ID stores that your module is connected to TCP. But okay, it's connected using TCP to 192.168.0.1 server by using the port 80. Okay. Now to send from data onto the server, this thing get request or something. You can use the command T plus CIP. Uh, it got disconnected. I think. Oh, sorry, I just forgot one parameter that it takes the number of bytes you want to send. So for me, it's around uh, that is 18 bytes. So it's uh, like 80 plus the percent 18. Now you should see. Something like aroma over here. So it says uh, it just has to just so it's just waiting for the data to be entered by the user. So I'm just using a get request to my server with HTTP version one or whatever. So just hit enter. After putting the data, again press enter. So over here you can see it has put out like HTML document that is on the server as the default page. And we have successfully interacted with the server. So now you, let's say if you want to close the connection or TCP connection, you can use command CP plus CIP. So it, it's already closed. That's why it's showing the status port. So that's all with this guys. Uh, if you are like interested in much any other commands using AT or something, I have just given a link down below to the Sparkphone AT command reference guide. So you can just go through that. And but uh, for me it's all with this. Hey guys, it's me once again. If you are and like interested in much like any other commands, you hit the thumbs up button. If you have like, I have like 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 just given a link down below. To you can subscribe to my channel for the latest content. 80 comments. So guys, so thank you, you guys for watching. Stay tuned for later content.